What's up guys, this is Zach with Top Deck Nation, and today we're going to be featuring our first Burning Shadows deck showdown, and that is going to be Galissapod GX and Darkrai GX. Now, our Galissapod GX deck profile was posted yesterday, so check that out if you have the chance. Um, it's a really interesting deck. We have Zeruark as a secondary attacker, but really we're focusing on uh, both Galissapod, the GX, and the non-GX from Guardians Rising. So it'll be a really interesting matchup here. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. So it looks like I won the coin flip, so I will be going first, and I'm on the left, uh, FYI. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. And it looks like I didn't mulligan or anything. Uh, I think my opponent did, so I will be getting an additional card. And she's just going to go ahead and draw her hand here. So... Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Looks like we see another mulligan, so that'll give me a little bit of a card advantage. Not too much, but you never know. Maybe I'll find like another basic or something uh, out of those two cards. So she's going to go ahead and shuffle it up there. And uh, basically the Speed Dark Ride deck, uh, it really gained another attacker as well as another form of energy acceleration with this Dark Ride GX. It has this ability where if it's in the discard, uh, you can put it on the bench. And if there's any energy in the discard, you can put one of those dark energy on it as well. So uh, really good in a pinch if you're trying to get a little extra damage boost or just power up another Dark Ride really quickly. So um, I think it's a really good contender looking forward, but... Uh, We'll have to see how Burning Shadows, you know, what it brings to the table. I think a lot of decks are going to be, um, you know, emerging after the set comes out. And here we go. So we're going to start this match. And I have a Wimpod. And I'm going to go ahead and use Ultra Ball. So ideally, I can't really see my hand completely here. But ideally, you want to bridge it on the very first turn. Because you can get a couple more Wimpod out. You can get uh, Zerua. You can get Tapu Koko, a Ringaroo. You know, pretty much whatever you need. So I did Ultra Ball for the uh, Tapu Lele. And that will get me the Bridget. So it's a good thing that it's not prized. And I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, Wimpod, Zerua. And I think I'm going to grab a Ringaroo. I've had some success with a Ringaroo. Um, you know, it's a little bit of a questionable play, I guess. I guess you could put out a second Zoroa just to make sure. Uh, Zoroa is actually really, really good in this matchup. Or Zoroark, I should say. Because uh, if my opponent has a full bench, that means Zoroark is doing 160 damage. And then attach a Choice Band or Professor Kikui. And suddenly I'm already uh, knocking out those Dark Rise. So you'll notice I put the Oringaru as the active, mainly because I didn't really want him to uh, knock anything else out on the bench. I didn't want him to have like a really, really good turn and knock out a top of Lele for two cheap prizes. Uh, obviously, I didn't want him to knock out my attackers like Wimpod and Zoroa. And uh, speaking of which, Wimpod has this really cool ability where on the very first turn of your uh, of the game, it actually has a free retreat cost. So that let me retreat out to the Oringaru. So my opponent didn't really have a whole lot. We saw an attachment and a choice band, but that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a float stone on Zoroa, get the Zoroark. So now I can freely stand in and retreat and uh, switch among my Pokemon. I'm going to go ahead and put the GX down. Uh, the GX or the GX and the non GX. I will say the non GX is actually really, really impressive because um it has this attack called Resolute Claws, and if it's going against a GX or an EX, if it's attacking one of those, it's doing a whopping 150 damage. So with a Choice Band, um, I'm potentially already getting like a knockout. Now, it's really a matter or not I got the Choice Band. I don't think I did. So I'm going to stand in and retreat, and I think I'm just going to hit for the 150 anyway. I'm putting a lot of pressure on my opponent here. So sadly, I didn't get the one hit knockout. It would have been awesome on the second turn, but uh, that is why I chose to attach and evolve to the non GX because I think it's just a really aggressive uh, attacker. And it's got this really cool ability called armor where it takes 30 less damage uh, from attacks. So it's a really bulky non uh, GX attacker. It's only going to be giving up one prize. And we see my opponent play an N, so I'll be drawing a fresh hand of six. I don't mind that at all. And the good thing about Oringaru is that in the later game, uh, if my opponent ends me to like one or two, for example, um, Oringaru is really going to save the day because I can play that hand out, uh, draw up until three, and then hopefully find like another supporter or top of Lele or whatever I need for that turn. So my opponent attaches another energy. I think uh, she got a max elixir off, so that's good. So right now, uh, she's not really able to hit me. I don't know if she's going to retreat out into something or what exactly. 
but I don't think any of her Pokemon have two energy on them. So she'll need an altar of the moon and an energy. So uh, there's the energy, but can she get the altar of the moon to retreat? That is the question. But as you can see, uh, my second turn, I was pretty much able to get set up. I think a lot of that is attributed to Bridget. I think Bridget is just really, really strong. Um, and I think Bridget is in breakthrough. So once the uh, rotation does happen in September, and we'll try to post some updated lists and things like that for these as well. This is more of a pre-rotation world championship format. Um, I think Bridget should be in the format still. So that should be good. So she actually passed because maybe she realized, hey, it's not worth it for um, another Dark Rider to get damaged really heavily or even get knocked out. So I'll just pass. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, she probably wished that she had like a, uh, a baby evil tall, you know, the non EX evil tall to Oblivion Wing. But I'll be using N, drawing six cards. And my bench is already full. Can't really do much about that. And I think I'm just going to Resolute Claws for the knockout. Take two prizes, get a nice surprise, uh, prize lead, see how it goes from there. So at this point, she has to decide what to bring up. She's going to bring the Darkrai up with the energy, so that's probably smart just to make sure that she can actually pull off an attack. Um, so right now she's doing 80 damage, not quite enough. She's actually going to need another attachment to make it 100, and then... Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe two more Max Elixirs and a Professor Kikui, three more Max Elixirs, I don't know, it's uh, it's really rough because she's kind of at a really big disadvantage here. She essentially has to be doing 160 damage to knock out this non-GX Gullisopod because of that armor ability. Um, on the other hand, she could go for something like Zoroark, she could uh, maybe try to soften up the GX but it really just kind of comes down to that. But uh, I think this is a smarter play, actually. She's going to bring up the uh, the baby evil tall. Now, if she can attach to it or max elixir or something, you know, it might be a way just to kind of soften something on the board. Hard to say. Uh, there comes the altar of the moon down. So she's slowly getting set up here. The energy comes down. And ideally, you know, some kind of supporter would be great here. The fill blower is great. And there we go, a sycamore, a nice clean sycamore at that, discarding pretty much nothing. So uh, really well played out there. And she's just kind of thinking, you know, what should she uh, do at this point? All right, so she's going to alter ball the hex maniac and the N. So she's probably wanting to get another Darkrai out, maybe. Uh, maybe the other Darkrai, hard to say for sure. So she's going to get the Darkrai out. Um, and for the record, that's just a full art Darkrai. It's not the one from the uh, Burning Shadow set. So this is the one from Breakpoint, I believe. So she could start powering that one up. But in this matchup, Evil Tall is actually pretty good because it's kind of like a seventh prize attacker. Um, it's kind of like a form of free energy acceleration. You just keep doing it until you're really set up on your bench. And if it gets knocked out, not a big deal because you really don't have to play any more down. And uh, your opponent still has to take out six prizes. They still have to knock out three Dark Rice. So it's really just kind of like a free attacker in this uh, in this type of matchup. So the uh, question is, should I go ahead and try to knock out the baby evil tall? Or should I just kind of weaken it um, just for the sake of putting damage on the board? Because really, I mean, even if I knock it out, it's kind of pointless. Because if you think about it, um, she's not going to put down another evil tall. So really, I still have to knock out two dark ray. But at the same time, um, I'm just trying to take as many prizes as possible. Um, it would be taking an energy off her board and reducing her damage output. So I'm going to go ahead and use the GX attack, which if you're unfamiliar with it, it does 150 damage and then I go to the bench. So that's really strong, especially with a choice band uh, and or a Professor Kikui. But in this situation, 150 is more than enough to knock out that evil tall. So I'm up three prizes right now. And as you can see, I mean, the deck is really strong. I was really surprised. Uh, Galissapod, I guess when you... Uh, 
hear the name, you can't really judge the book by its cover because you don't really think of it as like, you know, a competitive Pokemon or something like that. You're wondering why uh, they didn't give such good attacks to other Pokemon, but uh, it's really strong. I mean, all three attacks are really good uh, throughout this match. You'll see the second attacks actually really strong too, where it does a hundred and then your damage is reduced by 20. Um, you know, really a lifesaver in those situations where your opponent could just one shot you otherwise. So my opponent, it looks like she is going to be playing an N. I'm going to go down to three. But again, this is one of those situations where a Rangaroo is really, really clutch because it can save me in those situations. But as you can see here, a Rangaroo is my active. So more than likely, a Rangaroo will be getting knocked out. But fortunately, I did get a uh, Professor Sycamore. So that should be good. And we're going to see another Ultra Ball here. So maybe she's trying to get the other Darkrai out at this point. I'm not really sure what she's trying to get. We're going to see the Ultra Ball come out. And it's interesting because she got rid of the Choice Band. She, I think she plays four Choice Band in that deck. But Choice Band is a really important card to knock out the GX Galissapod. But uh, then again, you know, most of my attackers on the field aren't really GXs. So probably not even too relevant. And she also discards a Kakui just in case uh, she needs to use it later on. So I think she's looking through her discard, maybe checking if there's one of the Burning Shadows Darkrise. We'll finally get to see it kind of debut in this match. And yeah, she'll go ahead and use the, uh, the, I think it's Dark Pulse for the knockout. So Zeroark is going to be the active now. And really a Choice Band is all I need for a knockout here, I think, because Galissapod's doing what it needs to, but I really need a Choice Band. Even with the Professor Kakui, I'm not exactly doing enough damage here. So Choice Band would be really ideal for getting a knockout. And if I can do that, that's taking two more energy off of her board as well. So I would be safe the following turn. So let's try and possibly do that. I'm going to Verse Seeker for the Sycamore. Um, yeah, let's try to get a Choice Band because I think a Choice Band would be a knockout. But I think I whiffed it again. I played three in the deck. I don't think any are prized. I think it's just really unfortunate luck. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to just probably hit with the... I'm not even sure which one I want to hit with. I mean, I guess ideally I'd want to hit with the GX because it's a little bulkier. Um, I can also just use Mind Jack for a cheap 100 damage or so. So it's going to be a tough decision. I think maybe Mind Jack. And as you can see, I'm just trying to count the math to see what the better option would be. But I think I'm going to go ahead and just use the first, uh, the second attack here. So... Um, can't really see it on the dice, but I'm pretty sure it says hundred damage. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be taking 20 less damage during the following turn. And that math is really going to make me kind of bulky. I'm already at 210 HP. So 230 HP, I seriously doubt she can pull that off. Um, she might come close because max elixir attaching for turn choice band that damage adds up really, really quickly. But at the same time, I really don't think she can hit 230. So top of Lele looks like, I think she wonder tagged for something. I'm not really sure, but that dark right is in the discard, I believe. So she can use that ability and she's going to take advantage of that. She might even have two dark right in the discard. I'm not sure, but she's going to go ahead and take advantage of that. And I think she used a, oh, she used a max elixir. So that's going to be another one powered up. Okay. So that Darkrai is pretty much powered up. I think it needs one more energy, but it's uh, you know it's a good strategy that she's actually spreading her damage or, or energy around. Um, I wouldn't really want to pile up three energy on that Darkrai because if I use Lysander or I guess Guzma in this case um, and knock it out, then she would be out three energy, which is basically an extra 60 damage. So um, really smart of her to just kind of spread this energy out. There's really no rush as long as I get it on the field. Um, as long as I'm able to attack, I should be good to go. And we're going to see a versus seeker. What is she going to get? She is going to get an, it looks like an N. Yeah, we're going to see an N because she's really wanting to just rub my hand. I think I had like six cards in my hand, so probably a good choice. So we're just shuffling it up right here. 
And while that's happening, guys, you know, let me know in the comments what kind of decks you want to see from Burning Shadows. Uh, we're going to have more videos like this all week. I actually have a, uh, a Dark Ride deck profile planned up for tomorrow, and then we're going to move on to our next deck showdown, which is going to be Guard of RGX versus a Ho-Oh type of like fire toolbox deck. So if you're into those decks, let me know in the comments, or if there are any other decks you want to see, like Top of Fini or something, uh, just let me know and we'll be sure to uh, get that recorded and posted this week. But we see another Max Elixir, and I think she I think she hit it. I wasn't sure. But she has a lot of energy on the board right now. She's doing, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I mean, she might even have enough for a knockout. It's pretty close. But I think the 230 is what's, like, offsetting the math here. I think otherwise she might have had a knockout, but I think she's just a little bit off. I mean, it's really close. So yeah, I think she was just a little bit off. I think she did 190. So yeah, that was really, really close. Uh, the 20 damage didn't matter too much, I don't think. But actually, I think it, yeah, I think it actually prevented that knockout. So yeah, that attack was a lifesaver, to be honest. So I'm going to Sycamore. I got that off of the end. And I'm going to fill blower. I need to get rid of the choice band and that altar. Being able to freely switch between those dark eyes is kind of annoying because if I can't keep using Guzma every turn, then uh, she's basically keeping up with my prize exchange. So I'll attach this Roark just in case I find another grass energy. I only play the four DCE and no special charge, so um, probably pretty safe to just manually power up the Roark this way. So I guess I'm going to retreat and use Mind Jack for 130. Um, I didn't really want to have to do that, but I figured if Zoroark's knocked out, it's not a huge deal. He only gives up one prize. Um, and we see another Altar of the Moon down. I think she plays four, so it's really hard to just kind of permanently get rid of that problem because uh, she can just hold on to them. She can wait until the fill blowers are played and just puts them down to replace it. So, and that's one reason why this Speed Dark Ride deck is so good going into the next format. Um, we'll probably see a lot more play from Mars Shadow GX. Uh, it's a fighting type and it has an ability that says it can use any attack from uh, your discard, from your basic Pokemon. Uh, it does need the energy, but that is pretty much a nice little counter to these Dark decks that are probably going to be popping up soon. And interestingly, she's going to Wonder Tag with Top of Lele and get the Guzma. Uh, Guzma is essentially Lysander, except it makes you switch out as well, uh, which in this case is actually not even really relevant because she can just kind of free retreat back out. So I think it's overall a better Lysander, and that's why I'm playing two in the Galissapod deck as well, since we play uh, plenty of Floatstone and ways to retreat. So she's going to bring... Uh, oh, actually, she didn't even play the Guzma. Interesting. So uh, I think she... I think she's just opting to hold on to it for the following turn. Maybe she thought I was going to use Hex Maniac or something, but um, I thought she would have brought up the uh, GX Glossopod, but she's going to opt to uh, kind of conserve her resources and wait on that. So Zoroark will go down, so I'll have to be careful here. I'm going to Rescue Stretcher and get back the Orangaroo. And really, that's just a safety measure because where I have a bit of a prize advantage, I might even be taking a prize this turn. Who knows? Um, if I am into one, into two, something like that, really annoying. So I don't really want to have to deal with that. So I'm going to play an end. That's all I have. But I'm going to end myself to three. Maybe I can thin my hand down and then use Instruct, which is a Ringaroo's ability. Draw until three. And hopefully draw into something I need here. That's really uh, my focus. That choice band has been really annoying to draw into. I don't think I've drawn into a single one yet. And yeah, it looks like I still didn't. I think I drew like an energy, a guzma, and a fill blower. So I have been whiffing that choice band. I think maybe one is prized. I mean, I, I don't know at this point. It's kind of annoying. But I'm going to instruct. I'm trying to get the choice band, and I think I whiffed it again. So... I drew a lot of cards this turn, and I still did not get the choice band. My deck is uh, continuing to continuing to thin down, and I still can't draw into that choice band. So this time, I'm just going to retreat and hit with that GX. It's really unfortunate that I can't uh, get the knockout, but I will do 150. So yeah, unfortunately, it's just how it is, but that's okay. 
And as you can see here, my opponent has so much damage on the board, it's possible that maybe I can put out Tapu Koko later in the game and just kind of spread the damage and take multiple prizes. That might be an option, but um, yeah, as you can see later on in this game where I haven't taken these knockouts, I've let my opponent here just kind of stack all these energy up. And I mean, if you look how many energy on the board, it's just kind of insane at this point. I think there are like 10 energy on the board. So that means Darkrai is doing 220 damage. So easily one shotty my Galissapod, anything on my board really. So I'm curious what kind of play she will do here. Maybe going after the top of Lele would be smart just to kind of get rid of that. And then uh, the Galissapod's already damaged, so why not do that? But I don't think she... Yeah, I think I end away the Guzma, so she couldn't really do that. But my Galissapod will go down. She's down to three prizes. And at this point, I am a little bit worried. But this Dark Rider that she brought up is actually damaged. So she's going to have to pretty much... Uh, take the loss, take those, uh, take that knockout. So I'll go down to one prize more than likely. And as you can see here, I used Acerola and that's going to be a huge comeback card because she was probably planning on, uh, Lysandering that, uh, that Galissapod out. So I was able to pretty much heal it off, replace it with another one and then use the first attack. So if it became active, it is 120 damage for one energy. So I was able to do that. A really good combo. Acerola probably saved this game here because otherwise she could have just brought it up and knocked it out, but it set her back a turn or two at least. And now I don't know if she has enough energy on the board. It looks like she's a, she's got eight energy on the board. So that means she's doing 180. So if she has a choice band. I guess she's doing enough for the knockout. But at this point, keep in mind that she can't really attack with the Dark Rise on the bench. Because if she does, I can just use Mind Jack for a knockout. She's going to have to attack with this bulkier Dark Rise. But unfortunately, it only does 130 damage. And Tapu Lele is only doing 60 damage right now. So it might be smart to possibly soften up this Galissapod and then use Top Lele the following turn. But it is a tough decision either way. The game is fairly close because we're exchanging these one-hit knockouts basically at this point. So she's just kind of thinking out her options, and that's fine. But, um... Yeah, if there was any way she could, like, Ninja Boy or something like that, it'd be pretty cool to see the other Darkrai come out. Um, that might be an option for this deck as well, maybe looking ahead. But uh, she damaged uh, the Galissapod, did 130 damage. I'm down to one prize, so if I can bring up the any of these dark rise, I would be in great shape. So there's the Guzma. I had the energy. And yeah, so dark Rye will go down. That will be game one. So as we begin game two... Um, yeah, looking ahead, that's what we're kind of uh, expecting. This matchup is pretty even between the two. Um, I think earlier game, I think Galissapod has the advantage simply because of, uh, you know, it's really bulky. Um, it can do more damage right off the get-go. The second turn, the GX can hit 180. The GX attack can hit 180 with a choice band. So I think early on, Galissapod has the advantage. But later on in the game, it gets kind of close because of the... Um, because of Darkrai, you're having all these max elixirs, you're attaching with Evil Tall, your manual attachments, your choice bands, and it gets to the point where you're kind of exchanging those knockouts as well. So, um, yeah, so at this point, let's go ahead and jump into game two. We'll kind of skip the shuffling and stuff, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so kicking this game off, uh, she will be going first since I've won the first game. Uh, that's usually how the match series goes. We're playing best of three here. So, uh, she gets a looks like a better start than last time. She's able to go ahead and discard the uh, the Dark Rye with the ability and a Dark Energy. So that's already going to be an energy on the board this turn. Let's see what she gets off that. Maybe a Tapu Lele. Um, hard to say for sure. Maybe another uh, Dark Rye with the Dark Pulse attack. So we're going to have to see what happens here. So we see a Tapu Lele. That's good. She'll be able to get a Supporter. Draw some more cards this turn. And she's going to grab an N. Okay, so maybe she has some resources in her hand that she doesn't really want to get rid of. Maybe some uh, extra energy cards, maybe uh, fill blowers or something. Hard to say for sure, but she's going to opt to N. And I think she's... Let's see if she's going to go ahead and play it or not here. 
she may want to thin down her hand a little more. So Alter the Moon, uh, let's see, she's going to go ahead and use that Dark Eye ability, activate it, so that's good. So her start is quite a bit better already, especially if she can maybe get an attachment this turn. Um, yeah, there's a choice band, so... Yeah, there's the end. Okay, so her start is quite a bit better than last time. Um, I mean, I can already tell that she's probably going to maybe get an attachment off, maybe into Max Elixir, maybe even two Max Elixirs. So I'll have to be really careful. Hopefully I can draw into a Pokemon here. Otherwise, she might um, actually knock me out without even having the chance to get it set up or anything. So, yeah, we're just going to shuffle it up here, draw our new fresh hands of six cards, and hopefully... I will draw into something, whether it be like a Bridget or a Topolele or something like that. So, uh, okay, so we get a Bridget. So that's, yeah, that's okay, I guess. But, yeah, that will at least prevent her from donking me the following turn. But I will need some kind of supporter looking ahead. So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, there's the Max Elixir. So the Max Elixir will come down. She's got three energy on the board, a Choice Band, an Altar of the Moon. She's definitely set up in this game. So, you know, I think this game is going to be a little more in her favor, at least in the earlier game, because uh, she'll be able to take a couple of cheap knockouts as I have to get set up here. So I'm going to play Bridget. I have an Ultra Ball I drew, so in the following turn I can top a Lele for another supporter, but for now Bridget is what I need. So I'm really thinking here, should I go for the same Aringaru strategy as before? Um, didn't really help a whole lot. I'm thinking maybe a second Zoroa might be good just to make sure I get the Zoroark out. So I'm just kind of searching through the deck, seeing what is prized. And I, you know, I think I'm leaning towards Zerua, honestly, because I want to make sure I've got plenty of attackers this game, um, especially where she's going to be a little more aggressive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I can't really play any other supporters or do anything else at this point. So, I mean, I guess I will... Yeah, I guess I'll just kind of attach to the Wimpod, and I think I'll have to pass because I... I mean, I guess I can Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele and let it kind of take a hit, but at the same time, she might actually knock out Tapu Lele the following turn. All right, so I am going to have to pass. The Wimpod is probably going to be knocked out, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, we see a Verse Seeker for another N, so she's going to get a fresh hand of six cards, and we're going to see what she gets off of that. She's already got a really good setup here. As long as she gets an energy, she can attach it to the Darkrai and get that knockout all ready for, another or for the first prize of the game. So, yeah, I would say in general this matchup's really close. Like I said, Galissapod usually is a stronger earlier game because by the second turn you can already start one-shotting some stuff. But Darkrai... Um, really is a force to be reckoned with. It's almost tempting to, uh, you know, change a couple of the counts of the list going ahead, maybe adding like a third Darkrai GX to make sure we get those energy on the board. But uh, it seems like the deck is running fairly consistent. And again, tomorrow, guys, I will have the full deck list up. So uh, check it out on our channel if you are interested in that. So we see a Max Elixir, and I think she was able to get the Max Elixir. Uh, does she have an energy to attach for the turn? Which I guess it doesn't matter. She can just retreat out using Alter the Moon. So, yeah, there we go. So I think she's in really good shape here. She's getting that knockout. So what I need right now is a way to uh, evolve to the Galissapod, get a choice band, and get that knockout. That is what I'm really, really looking for right now. So I'm thinking as far as like the order of operations here, what... You know, what can really get me that choice band? Um, should I... I'm trying to think if I should rescue Stretcher to get back the Wimpod, or if I should focus on being aggressive and possibly getting the top of Lele, um, thinning my hand out a little more, and using Instruct. So, kind of confusing, but I think the better play here is to... Uh, maybe instruct for a couple cards, and then use Sycamore, and surely off of nine cards, I can get what I need. Um, so those, yeah, that's not really a great instruct. I actually had to discard two more supporters, but let's see if I can get it. And oh my gosh, it looks like I whiff the choice band again. So it's going to be one of those games again. Normally choice band would really push this uh, matchup 
a little more into your favor, but in this case, I'm going to have to stick with two-shotting my opponent until I can draw into what I need. So, I think I'm just going to... Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just going to stick with using the... Uh, yeah, the second attack, so doing 100 damage and then reducing it by 20 the following turn. I could have used the GX attack and done 150 and gone to the bench, but I don't really think that's too relevant because then my GX attack is pretty much wasted. I'd rather save it, hopefully, this game. Um, so with a choice ban, it's a guaranteed knockout. And as you can see, she's continuing to kind of burn through that deck, drawing into exactly what she needs. She's got that evil tell out, which is pretty scary because it's basically a free prize. Um really helps with that prize exchange in her favor. And if she can get an energy, I think she actually, yeah, I think she already attached to the, uh, the dark ride on the bench. So, um, not really sure what she's going to do now. I think she's probably just going to retreat and use dark pulse. And I think she's doing like a lot of damage right now, but okay, I think she's going to opt to actually pass, possibly. Maybe she meant to attach to it, but uh, didn't, but that's fine. So, I mean, the evil tall in this situation, um, it really helps because even if she can't attack with it, she can just sit and wall behind it because uh, if, it's, if it's knocked out, it doesn't matter. My, uh, I would still have to knock out three Darkrai because of the prize exchange, and then meanwhile, she's just kind of setting up everything. So, I'm actually going to Guzma the dark ride. I'm going to get two energy off the board. And, uh, because I can just use stand in and retreat, I can remove that effect where it says it has to be your active this turn. So, uh, Galissapod will be taking the knockout. Now I think I actually, uh, misplayed a little bit. I think I announced these, uh, the first attack, uh, and the second attack would have done a knockout as well, as well as reducing my damage. So, uh, that's why the math will be a little bit funky here. She's going to be doing a little more damage than I had hoped for. Um, if she pulls off an attack this turn. So we see the evil tall come down. She's going to make sure uh, to attack with it this turn. It's doing 60 damage, softening up the Galissapod, and she'll be able to attach an energy on the bench as well. So really good, really good play from my opponent here. And... Um, yeah, and there's not much, not really much more I can say here because she has a pretty good board state, even with that knockout. I've got four prizes left, so hopefully I can knock out two of the GXs uh, or the EXs and not have to worry about that evil tall. But we're going to see a Versus Seeker, and she's going to play... Yeah, it looks like she's going to play an N, so she's going to continue to be disruptive. Um, I do have a Rangaroo out again this turn, so hopefully that will draw me a couple extra cards. But otherwise, I mean, she's in a really good state right now. Um, I don't think she can act actually hit for uh, 210 damage, but she can use Choice Band uh, and Oblivion we need to do 60 and then soften it up for a KO on the following turn. So that's probably her plan right now. So here comes an Alter Ball, and we see that Darkrai again. So uh, that that's the same combo she had the very first turn. So she'll be able to get another Darkrai out with another energy. So really strong play. Maybe she wants to get another of the Dark Pulse Dark Cry just to be safe. So, I mean, there's really not a whole lot of setup required with that deck. Once it gets a couple of Dark Cries out, uh, you get a couple of the other ones in the discard. I mean, you're just kind of streaming the board with energy. And against most matchups, it's really hard to kind of counter that. So, I'm guessing she's going to put that one down, uh, use that ability to get the other Dark Cry down as well. But okay, I think she is, okay, she's actually going to opt to hold off on that. So maybe the following turn she's going to do that. But uh, we're going to see the Oblivion Wing come down to do 60 on the Galissapod. I'm going to go ahead and use Rescue Stretcher to get the uh, Wind Pod out just to make sure I always have a Galissapod out. Probably really important here because if my GX is knocked out, my other guys can't really hit quite as hard. So the question is, what do I have in my hand? Do I have a supporter? I see an N, but that's not really going to help me all that much. Um, ideally, I I really don't want to have to knock out this evil tall. 
Um, I don't want to be in this situation where I have to use that GX attack again. I had a choice band would have been great. A Guzma would have been great, but I had, I'm kind of whiffing on this stuff again. So, uh, in the green scheme of things, I may have to use the GX attack again to knock out the baby evil tall. And that might be, that might be considered kind of like a, a silly play just because you're wasting your best attack. But, uh, you have to keep in mind at the same time that, um, I don't want to have to waste my resources here. And, you know, at the same time, if I can just continually be aggressive, if I knock out the evil tall, it is taking one of his energy off the board and reducing that attack as well. So, um, I mean, I think the GX attack might be the way to go. It's hard to say, but I think I may have to go ahead and do that. I'm trying to thin my hand out a little bit. And if I thin my hand out, I should be able to use instruct. And I was able to get a second zero work out. So I think I can instruct for two more cards, maybe drawn into like a double colorless energy or something like that. Um, I get a grass energy, so doesn't really help too much. But the fill blower will help because if I do get a knockout, that should help quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and use the GX attack, switch into... Uh, I'm going to switch into Tapu Lele. I think Oranguru is going to be uh, pretty necessary in the late game if she starts using N on me. So next turn, I need to focus on maybe getting this next uh, Galissapod powered up. I've got the Wimpod. I can use Instruct next turn, so hopefully I can draw into what I need. So we see the attachment. There comes the Darkrai from the discard. So right now she's got five energy on the board. So she's only doing 120 with the Darkrai. Uh, we see another energy. So she's doing 140 with the Dark Pulse Darkrai. And we see a Guzma. And she's going to bring up the... Oh, she's going to bring up the Zoroark, interestingly enough. So uh, maybe she sees that it's got an energy on it. It's got a float stone. So at least I can get rid of that threat right now. So it's going to go down. And it really comes down to this. I mean, if I can get a choice band, uh, maybe I can finally... I don't even think a choice band would work at this point because I used the GX attack. So, yeah, I think I may have to just kind of stick with the previous strategy of just kind of two-shotting my opponent here. But at least I have two Galissapod, so I can at least uh, maybe retreat to the other one and uh, it'll be a little bit bulkier to work with. So I'm going to stick a more... And I'm drawn into a lot of energy, so that's good for the following turn, as well as Acerola. Again, that Acerola had, uh, it was really clutch in the last game because it basically healed one of the Galissapod and let me attach to another one. So that might be a strategy. If she hits one of the Galissapod, I can just kind of get it off the board and just, you know, basically uh, just rinse and repeat, just kind of switch between these two Galissapods and healing. So I'm going to hit with Zoroark. And the main reason I'm doing this is because um, it is a non-EX attacker, so it only gives up one prize. So if Darkrai knocks this out, uh, she'll be down to three prizes, and so she'll still have to knock out both of my Galissapod. Um, if she found a way to knock out one of the Galissapod, you know, the next turn she would probably just Guzma out the top of Lele. So basically, um, I'm making her have to take three knockouts instead of two. At least that's the plan. You know, if she played Guzma or something to get around it, um, that would be another story, but I think I should be okay this turn. And as you can see here, like just like last game, um, the later game is really good for Darkrai because she's got a ton of energy. She's got like seven energy on the board here. So um, probably the best play here, not attacking with Galissapod. It would probably go down. So what is she going to play? I think she's going to play the Guzma. Yeah, I think she's playing the Guzma, and I think that might be a knockout, to be honest. Yeah, she's able to get a knockout because the Guzma, I think it was attacked by the Oblivion Wing earlier, so that will be a knockout. And so now the game is really close. It's actually in her favor. If she can Guzma out a top of Lele, she pretty much wins the game here. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I've got the DCE on the Galissapod, and I think my game plan is to probably knock this one out, this Darkrai. Uh, and the second attack by a Galissapod will reduce that damage. So unless she'll be able to hit by 230, she won't be able to knock out the Galissapod. But I'm trying to see if there's anything else I can do here. And I think I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm just going to play the N. 
Now, unfortunately, Acerola does require you to have damage on the board on your Pokemon. Um, otherwise, I could have just scooped up the top of Lele and maybe uh, did that instead. So that way she would have to, you know, continue to, to damage me instead of taking a one shot. But I think this is probably a good play here. I'm inning her down to two. I'm not really sure what she got off of it, but I'm forcing her to basically have more energy and a Guzma to get the knockout. So I will be able to free retreat out, I believe. And, you know, actually I'm trying to consider, is it worth attacking with the Zeroark or is it worth attacking with the Galissapod? That is, um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Either one takes the knockout. But I'm kind of tempted to hit with a Zeroark because then um, she'll be required to... Yeah, I mean, then she'll be required to have that Lysander. I guess regardless, it doesn't really matter too much in the green scheme of things. But I guess my logic is she has to knock out the Zeroark. Um, that gives me a turn to end her down to one. And then she would need the Guzma again. So I think this is probably a safe play. I think either way, it kind of leads to the same thing. But either way, I've got both attackers ready to go. And I am down to one prize. I mean, she really needs to end me down because I think I've got a decent sized hand at this point. So we see another Dark Rye and we see a Tapu Lele. Uh, I think she plays four in in the deck. So more than likely she should be able to grab an in. Um, and then she'll be able to use Dark Pulse for the knockout here. So again, really, really close. We're both gonna be going down to one prize. Oh, she's gonna actually Sycamore, okay. Maybe she realizes that, you know, it's kind of pointless to use the N if I'm just going to instruct afterwards. So uh, maybe she's looking for a certain card. Maybe she's looking for a Guzma for the following turn. So she's going to play Sycamore. We're going to see what she gets in just a second here. But that's really what she needs here. She's going to need a Guzma for the following turn. So I see an N in her hand for the following turn. That's not bad, but I don't think that's quite enough to get what she needs. So she's going to fill blow with the choice band. That's probably a really good play. Um, but otherwise, what is she going to do? She's got six energy on the board. So she's doing 140. So she'll knock out zero arc, go down to one prize. And um, I'll bring up a Rangaroo because I think I've got a float zone in my hand. She should be out of fill blowers at this point. So that should be fine. So I think what I will do is... Yeah, I mean, she's doing so much damage that even if I um, didn't bench these guys down, she could still knock out a Rangaroo. So I'm trying to thin my hand out as much as I can. Um, again, all I'm doing right now is like 120 damage or so. Not enough to really knock out anything on her board. But I will top a Lele, and I will get the... It looks like I'm probably going to get the N... I think that should disrupt her quite a bit. She's got a Sycamore in her hand, or she had a Sycamore before. So, I mean, she's probably got a five or six card hand right now. So I think an end of one will hurt her a lot, especially if I can put a little bit of pressure on her. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're kind of drawn to the end of this match. It can go either way. Question is if we will see a game three out of this or if I will be able to take it in the next couple turns. Her altars are gone, so... If she can draw into another one, that's great, but otherwise, hard to say for sure. So I'm going to retreat out, and I think I'll just hit for, yeah, I'm going to hit for 100. And so she'll have to do 230 damage to knock out Galissapod. Um, otherwise, if she has a Guzma or a Verse Seeker, she basically wins the game. So can she pull that off? Does she have anything in her hand? Does she have what she needs to get that combo off? Um, she's already used both of her top of Lele, so that won't be an option. Um, her deck looks pretty thin. Her discard is pretty much piled up there, so I think she's kind of run out of some of the supporters. I'm sure she has a few outs left, but does she have them in her hand? And I don't think she does, simply because uh, I don't really see her you know, putting down the Guzma or anything. So I don't really, I don't know, I don't know what she's trying to do here. I think she's just trying to 
check the discard, check my discard to see if I have any Guzmas left, if I have any Versus Seekers left. And I think at this point in the game, I was pretty much down to like next to nothing. I think I've used both Guzmas, uh, two or three Verse Seekers. So, you know, there might be one or two outs left in the deck. But I think she's going to try to play it safe here because she realizes there's not much more I can do. I can hit for, um, I think, 100 after the, the effect. So next turn, I can knock you out if you don't knock me out. Or 110 with the other Darkrai, I should say. But there you go. It looks like off of the end, I was able to get the Guzma. Uh, maybe it was a top deck. Not for sure. I think it was off the end, though. But the Guzma will allow me to bring up the Darkrai and go ahead and get the knockout. And as you can see, I just kind of yeah, just kind of swooped it out of there. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're going to have more of these in the future. Uh, we're going to be doing Ho-Oh versus Gardevoir later this week. We're going to have the Darkrai GX profile. So the same deck you just saw here in uh, tomorrow's video. So check that out. Like us on Facebook at Top Deck Nation. Show us your support. I would really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, like us on, uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. I'm really, really thankful guys. We've hit over 2,100 supporters. Let's try to hit 2,500 this summer. That is my goal. But in the meantime, this has been Zach with Top Dick Nation. Again, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one as always.